everyone. Um, welcome to the webinar for Give Local Piedmont. We are uh, going to just wait um, a couple, uh, maybe one more minute. We still have a couple people joining. So um, we're really excited everyone's here and just hang tight for one more minute. Okay, it looks like we've got everyone. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, so again, welcome to the Give Local Piedmont training webinar. Uh, my name is Dawn and I'm gonna be leading you through today's presentation. Um, I've got a few housekeeping items to note just before uh, jumping in. First, I wanna let everyone know that the webinar will be recorded today um, and it will be posted in the toolkit on the Give Local Piedmont site. Um, it'll be under the resources tab. And then at any time during the webinar, you can use the GoToWebinar chat module to send across questions. And we'll get to those um, after the webinar today. So everyone's questions uh, will be answered. Um, I also have Dee Dee on the webinar from the Northern Piedmont Community Foundation. Um, she's been working extra hard to make sure the Giving Day is great for you all this year. So hi, Dee Dee. Hello, Dawn, and thank you so much for hosting us. Um, this is my second webinar with Dawn, and I have to tell you the um, information I heard the first time around made me want to come back for seconds. It was really, really, really helpful. Um, and as you all know that are on the call, we're, we're, we're proceeding full steam ahead with May 5th. Um, there's virtue in that this is an online fundraiser. We also believe that the timing of this is... is um, uh not the worst uh, don i i don't know how much you're aware but we're, we're offering we're trying our best and working with for-profit companies as well i mean all kinds of people are stepping up here in our communities but northern piedmont community foundation along with the path foundation uh has some support available for our nonprofits uh now in the immediate um but what i what i worry about is down the road especially because we've just been given a stay at home order in the state of virginia that lasts till june 10th oh my um so my own assumptions about this i know right my own assumptions about this are that actually doing an online fund for five weeks from now is actually fairly good timing um so i'm really hopeful that we can build some good fundraising campaigns uh, individually and collectively and uh, try and make this the best day possible. We're there to help Northern Piedmont and uh, you know how to reach us all. And um, I, I, you know, I, 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 we want to make this succeed, especially given the circumstances. And let me let Don get to it because this is a great, this is a great um, 30, 40 minute presentation. It's wonderful. Thanks, Dee Dee. So um, we're, we Mighty Cause, we're really excited uh, to be the platform for Give Local Piedmont this year. Um, and we're looking forward to providing technical support to you all as you gear up for um, the May 5th Giving Day. Um, so if you have any questions as you're getting everything ready, um, especially with like today's environment, um, or you know if a supporter has a question, our support team is here to help you. Um, you can email them at support at mightycause.com. Um, and I will have all of our support team's contact information at the end of the webinar. So you'll have a chance to write it down. Um, so don't feel like you have to do it right now. Um, and just a little bit of background. Um, Mighty Cause is a fully functional nonprofit fundraising suite that organizations use um, all year round 
uh, to raise money for their causes. Um, we've been around since about 2006, and we're actually one of the first platforms to host Giving Days. So we've been doing this kind of event for a really long time, and we're really excited to host uh, Give Local Piedmont this year. So here's a look at today's agenda. Um, we're going to be going over some of the basics. Uh, then we're going to walk through uh, registering and navigating your nonprofit page on the platform. Uh, after that, we'll go over the prizes available, uh, and then we're going to move into giving event strategy. Um, and then we'll do a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. So again, if you have a question while I'm presenting, just type it into the questions box of your GoToWebinar panel, and we'll make time for it at the end. Okay, so give local Piedmont basics. Okay. Just making sure there weren't any outstanding questions already. Um, okay, giving day basics. So um, give local Piedmont is going to be on May 5th this year. Um, it's a 24 hour giving day that runs from midnight to midnight. Um, early giving will start on April 21st. Uh, it's organized by the Northern Piedmont Community Foundation. Um, and the really awesome thing about uh, Give Local Piedmont is that there's about $22,000 in prize money at stake, and there's lots and lots of opportunities to win. And we'll go into the prizes available a little bit later on. So how do giving days work? Um, for those of you that don't know, a Giving Day is a unique campaign presented by a host organization, in this case, um, uh, Northern Piedmont Community Foundation, um, that allows organizations to compete with other nonprofits or really compete against themselves with their own goal uh, to win prize money. So Giving Days are a really exciting way for you to engage sponsors, community partners, peer-to-peer um, -peer fundraisers, and more just to spread the word about your organization and your mission and raise funds for your cause. So the limited time frame of a giving day creates a sense of urgency that donors tend to respond to. Um, and the prizes available uh, during the giving day give you some really nice fresh messaging opportunities for your supporters throughout the day. Getting started. So first things first, if you haven't done so yet, um, you're going to need to register your organization for Give Local Piedmont. So registration this year is a two-step process. Step one is going to givelocalpiedmont.org and filling out the registration form that you'll find there online. Um, you'll need to either log into Mighty Cause if you've been to Mighty Cause before, or um, you'll need to sign up for an account on Mighty Cause if you haven't been to Mighty Cause before in order to see the registration form. Um, so once you complete that registration form online, then you'll receive an email confirming that we've received it. And that email will also detail what you need to do for step two in order to complete your registration process. Um, you'll also be able to add administrators to your organization's account at that time. Um, so multiple people will be able to access your organization's account and um, help run the campaign. Uh, so step two, is filling out your organization's to-do list under the overview section on your nonprofit dashboard, which we'll get into all of this um, a little bit later on so you'll know where to find all of these things. Um, and just so you, you guys know, we preemptively imported information um, from your profiles on the previous Giving Day platform. Um, so any nonprofits that have participated in Give Local Piedmont in the past should really only have one or two tasks to do before your registration is complete. Um, and then once you complete registration by finishing both of these steps, then you'll receive an email confirming that you're approved and you're all set. So step one, fill out the registration form online. Step two, uh, complete your organization's profile. And the tasks really are just, um, you know, upload your logo, uh, provide a banner, write down, you know, your mission or um, just an about section um, and uh, uh, do your thank you page um, on the site. So again, I'll get into that a little bit more later. So once you've filled out and submitted your registration form for step one of the registration process, um, you'll need to complete the items on your to-do list for step two. Uh, so this list, again, is located in the overview section on your nonprofit profile. 
Um, it's right under your metrics. So there's four basic tasks to complete in order to um, totally complete your registration. Um, so you need to add that background image. Um, you know, you can upload your own photo or we have a gallery of stock background images that you can use. Um, another item that you need to complete is uploading your logo, um, which is gonna represent you throughout the Give Local um, Piedmont Giving Day. Um, you'll need to add a story, also called a description or an about section, um, that tells visitors to your profile about what your nonprofit organization does. Um, and then you'll wanna build a thank you page that donors will see once their donation transaction is completed. So if you click the link in the to-do list um, for each of these tasks, um, then you'll be taken right to the spot um, on your profile where you can complete that task. So it's really easy to complete the list. Um, so again, overview section you'll see on the little GIF here is where the to-do list is located. Um, and uh, click the link within that to-do list and we'll take you right to the spot in your account where you can um, complete the item. And then once you complete it, it'll automatically check itself off. And then, like I said before, for organizations who've participated in the past, um, we did import a lot of your information already from the previous platform. So most of these uh, tasks on your to-do to list should already be marked off. So a lot of you should just have like one thing that you have to complete before your registration is totally um, uh, complete and all set. So um, while you're going through these things, if you do need help or you're unsure about how to complete any of the items, um, then just let us know. You can email our support team at support at mightycause.com. We also have a support library that details um, how to go through each of these steps with video walkthroughs, screenshots, et cetera, um, that you know, will definitely be helpful uh, for you. So um, I also recommend taking the time to get to know your dashboard. Um, your dashboard is the admin section that appears on the left-hand side of the screen when you're logged in and you're on your nonprofit's profile page. So when you log in, you'll automatically land um, on that overview page, which is where, again, you'll find your to-do list, um, as well as some quick metrics for your nonprofit. Um, then, uh, as you can see on your dashboard, under the fundraising section, um, you can customize your organization page by toggling on the edit mode. Um, and then, you know, you can include page metrics within the organization profile, like adding a goal for the giving day, um, that enables a progress bar on your page. And then um, within the fundraising section, you'll also find the checkout flow, um, which we're gonna talk about in a few slides, as well as matching grants, which we're also gonna go into detail about later on. So below that on your dashboard is the report section where you're able to preview and export different types of donation reports. Um, and you can manage your nonprofit settings like URL customization and admin control from your settings section. So just a quick overview of your dashboard. Again, highly recommend just kind of logging in, like looking through everything, seeing what options you have um, and clicking around because that'll help you get most familiar with it if you've never been to Mighty Cause before. <clears throat> so um, your profile is the face of your nonprofit for Give Local Piedmont. So you'll want to make sure that it looks good and it represents you well. Um, and just so you know, your profile link is the link that you'll share with your supporters to ask them to donate to your Give Local Piedmont page. Um, so to share your page, just copy and paste that URL into an email or social post or you know wherever you're advertising the campaign. Um, so as you go through your to-do list, um, you'll want to customize your profile to match your brand for your nonprofit. So you can change your theme color to match your logo. You can upload media to your gallery um, to add the visual interest to your page. Um, and you know your story or description is really the centerpiece of your page. So in in that section, you'll you can put your mission statement. You can add photos and video. Um, and then just as a note, you will need to upload the video to YouTube or Vimeo first. Um, but you can embed it right within your story so people can watch it there right on your profile. Um, and then this, this spot is really where you can go in depth about your work um, and try and make that strong appeal to donors. You know, tell them why your organization needs their support, especially during this, um, you know, 
time that we're in, this crazy, crazy time, um, and, and show them the impact of your work. So spend some time customizing this profile because the more work you put into it, chances are the better you'll do during Give Local Piedmont. Um, and you know, you can have the best campaign strategy in the world, but when your profile, the page where people are going to actually make a donation, looks like you haven't done anything to it, um, there, you know, it's gonna turn donors off. So making sure that you have at least the basics filled out on this page, logo, um, you know, story section, et cetera, then that that'll be really helpful. So one of the really awesome things about Mighty Cause is that your nonprofit has quite a bit of control over the donation process, which is definitely unique among fundraising platforms. Um, from our checkout flow tool, um, you can opt into collecting the information you want from donors, like addresses and phone numbers. Um, you can also set up custom suggested donation amounts, and you can add descriptions to help tie those amounts um, to items or services your nonprofit provides. Um, and, it, and, you know, really, that really helps strengthen the appeal to donate. Um, the checkout flow also allows you to preview the whole checkout process without actually making a test donation. Um, so you can see what your final process looks like, and you can use that to edit yourself if needed. Um, and the checkout flow is also where you'll go to set up your thank you donation confirmation page, um, which uses the same text editor as your story on your profile. So you can add text, um, links, you can add a video or an image. Um, you can also add a custom call to action button that shows up at the bottom of the thank you page to, you know, that tells donors where you'd like them to go next. So, you know, a cool idea would be, um, for instance, um, asking them to sign up for your email list. Um, if there's another initiative that uh, you want them to, uh, you know, go to, like um, just checking out your website for latest updates, then you can link to that as well. Um, there's there's really a lot that you can do with our checkout flow tool to optimize your campaign and really customize that process for donors. So now um, we're going to move into talking about the awesome prizes that um, Give Local Piedmont has to offer and how you guys can all aim to win them. So Give Local Piedmont is offering grand prize grants to the top two places for both large and small organizations on the leaderboard, which gives a lot of nonprofits a chance to win. Um, the leaderboards are gonna be on the live event site. So as soon as the giving day begins, participating organizations will be able to see where they stand on um, the leaderboard. So um, it's important to mention that only online donations made through the Mighty Cost platform will count for leaderboard totals. So this is a really big reason why you want to push your donors to give online. Um, the leaderboard is going to reflect your cumulative total from the time early giving begins on April 21st to the end of the giving day on May 5th. So it's going to be a running total of everything you've raised online during that time period. Um, and here, you know, you're engaging in some friendly competition for those top prizes. Um, so um, again, prizes are going to be, grand prizes are going to be given to um, first and second place in both the small not profit category and the large. So first place is going to be $1,500 and second place is going to be $1,000. There's also a ton of additional um, prizes that you can win. Um, you see some of them here. There were so many, I couldn't list them all on this slide. That's how um, amazing Northern Piedmont Community Foundation was able to do in securing their prize money. So make sure that you go to givelocalpiedmont.org um, and go to the rules and prizes tab so that you can see a complete list of all of the prizes available and the rules associated with each. Okay, so now we're gonna jump in and talk through um, some ways that you guys can strategize to win some of these really awesome prizes that um, Northern Piedmont Community Foundation has secured for this year's Give Local Piedmont. So you have access to really great tools that you can use as you get ready for Give Local Piedmont and that is gonna be the nonprofit toolkit. So the toolkit has tips and tricks um, there's an FAQ, there's walkthroughs, um, and it also has templates that you can use for email and social media to help you get inspired and figure out how to promote your campaign. Um, the toolkit is also where you'll be able to find today's training recording, as well as logos and graphics that you can download 
to start tying your brand into the Give Local Piedmont brand. So definitely check out the toolkit if you haven't already. Refer back to it as you're planning your campaign. And you know I highly recommend bookmarking it on your um, browser. That way you can access it really quickly and you have all the tools at your fingertips. So since Give Local Piedmont is a 24 hour campaign, um, the trick to making the most of the event is to sustain your fundraising momentum. One really great way to do that and make sure your campaign is on track is to set mini goals um, for your nonprofit to help generate buzz and build excitement. So you'll wanna think of your overall fundraising goal um, and what, what are you gonna need to raise each part of the day to hit that fundraising goal? So you, know, you could do general like, in the morning, we'll need to raise this much, in the afternoon this much, in the evening this much. Um, if you get, if you wanna get really detailed about it, you could even do um, each hour of the day um, of you know, how much you'll need to raise each hour of the day in order to hit your goal. Um, the great thing about Give Local Piedmont, again, is they have tons of prizes that you can win. Um, so you can utilize those to help sustain your fundraising momentum and get people excited about helping you win those prizes. So something else that you can do to get your campaign rolling is asking for seed donations. Um, these donations are from people in your nonprofit's inner circle that essentially break the ice with donors and help get the ball rolling for your campaign. So people to ask for a seed donation um, would be your board, uh, your staff, volunteers, really anyone else at your nonprofit who's highly engaged in your work. And these seed donations, they don't have to be huge donations, but you know, getting a little bit in the bank by tapping the people in your inner circle really does help your campaign move forward and get those donations coming in. And as a reminder, early giving starts April 21st, so people can start making donations um, as soon as early giving opens up. So um, you know, you'll want to get some donations during the early giving period so that when uh, Give Local Piedmont begins on May 5th, your organization already has momentum um, in like right in the giving day. So a great strategy for driving donations during a giving event is securing a matching grant. Um, a matching grant is essentially a large donation that your nonprofit leverages to bring in other smaller donations by offering it up as a match. So for instance, um, if you have someone willing to give you $1,000, uh, instead of just putting that money in the bank and calling it a day, you could use it as a matching grant. So you'd take that $1,000 and say to your supporters, um, okay, so between um, this hour and this hour, um, all donations will be matched up to $1,000 for our nonprofit. So which you know basically allows your supporters to double their donation. Um, you can do a lot within the Mighty Cause Matching Grant tool. You have a lot of options for how to structure your match. Not all of the matches have to be one-to-one. -one. A lot of organizations like to do the one-to-one -one matching because it, it's um, e really easy to understand. Um, you know, if someone gives that amount, the exact amount is matched. Um, you can also, within the Matching Grant tool, do two-to-one matching, three-to-one. Um, you can even match a percentage of each donation or match a certain number of donations. So for instance, um, you know, for one of the prizes available, um, you know, for the most individual donations, you could say that if you get 100 donations um, within you know, a two hour time frame or three hour time frame, then that'll unlock an additional thousand dollars for your nonprofit. Um, and you know, this type of matching will help you actually drive donation volume and traffic to your site. Um, so not only can you, you know, post the matching grant um, to your site and have donors be able to see what is going on, but you can post multiple matching grants at the same time um, and in sequence. So, you know, if you are um, able to secure a couple matching grants, then um, you could, uh, you know, the first matching grant unlocks a second matching grant. So you can, you know, kind of fuel that momentum throughout the day for your organization, depending on what you're able to secure um, ahead of time. So since a matching grant is ultimately just a large donation, you'll want to follow the same process as you would when securing major gifts. So prospect, cultivate, ask. People who you should consider as prospects for a matching grant are board members, 
major gift donors who have given large donations to your nonprofit in the past. Corporate sponsors are also good prospects. Um, it's you know it's a really fun proactive way for corporate sponsors to get involved in a public way, especially um, with what's going on right now. Um, it 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 helps draw attention to um, that corporation's philanthropy. So a lot of um, you know businesses depending on you know their size at this point and if they're still open um you know some of them might be willing to give you a larger donation um if you know you're able to spread the word about them um you know tag them in all of your um social media posts about the grant when you're talking to your donors about it um include them their logo in your emails there's a, a ton of different ways that you can um, advertise them essentially as um, you know having supporting you by providing this matching grant so making sure that you're kind of setting it up um, as an opportunity for them will uh, help make it more appealing to them um, you know for the giving day so um, you know in the coming weeks go ahead make your asks and you know shore up the details of the matches that you're able to secure Again, you can have more than watch one match running at the same time on Mighty Cause. So if you do get a lot of great responses, um, don't feel like you have to pick and choose between, you know, the the um, individuals or if your board puts up a grant, a matching grant. Like, don't feel like you have to pick and choose. Use all of them um, as you as you want throughout the day. Uh, so you can set up as many matching grants on Mighty Cause as you want. Um, and then just a reminder, the matching grant tool is located. Um, in your Mighty Cause dashboard under the fundraising section. So moving on from matching grants, um, I want to talk a little bit about ambassadors. So ambassadors are people who are usually in your nonprofit's inner circle who can help boost your campaign. So that includes board members, volunteers, um, especially volunteers who are highly engaged, uh, staff members, um, et cetera. So, Utilizing ambassadors can help you break out of your list of existing supporters and engage new people, um, people that you wouldn't otherwise have access to. So an ambassador can help you in a few different ways. Um, they can simply share a link to your page uh, for Give Local Piedmont um, with their own social circle and ask them to donate, or they can set up a fundraising page to help solicit donations directly for your organization. So if you have a board member, for instance, who's very well connected, this can be a huge boost. Um, they can help by getting involved in that peer-to-peer -peer fundraising for you. Um, the Mighty Cost platform is actually set up for easy peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, so this can be a really great way to shake up your campaign and acquire new donors. Um, so if you wanted to try peer-to-peer, -peer, you would ask um, ambassadors, again, um, board members, staff, uh, engaged volunteers, you'd ask them to set up a fundraising page for your nonprofit on Mighty Cause for Give Local Piedmont. Um, this, you know, it might sound like a big ask, but it's often a really fun way to engage your biggest supporters and allow them to tell their own story about your nonprofit, you know, how they came to work with you, why your work is so important to them. And their campaigns don't distract or draw attention away from your campaign because you're all working together. They're operating right alongside your campaign and, you know, reaching out to people they know personally for donations. You know, in most cases, their friends and colleagues and family are not people your nonprofit would normally have access to to solicit donations. So you're going to be picking up new donors through peer-to-peer -peer most of the time. So for people like your board, volunteers, staff, um, program alumni, this can be a really great way for them to get involved without just being asked to give money. Um, it can, it, you know, it can make it be much more meaningful for them than just making a donation or sharing a link. Um, and especially with everything that's happening right now, um, asking people to support through peer-to-peer -peer, um, by setting up fundraising pages for you, it, it gives them the option if they're not able to donate at this time, they can set up that fundraiser and share the link to your page um, and their page on social media so that they're working with you to solicit donations. And that's a great way for, you know, if you have a, a young volunteer who's really engaged with your organization, but, you know, might not have the funds to donate right now, um, that's a great way for them to get involved and um, really help your nonprofit at the same time. 
So, um, you know, this the peer to peer process um, can actually be part of your your own stewarding process, you know, building and sustaining a relationship with that supporter. Um, we've also seen nonprofits get some really great peer to peer action going by just inviting people on social media um, or sending them an email asking for their help. Um, you know, and again, for younger people who have a big social network and are really comfortable online, but maybe they don't have a lot of cash to give, this the the peer-to-peer -peer option can be an excellent way for them to help out and make a meaningful contribution for your organization. So to help make things easier for your amb ambassadors, um, we do have the ability for you to set up a fundraiser template so that you can kind of um, get things started for them by um, uploading a, a, a photo. You can um, start um, an about section, to just uh, provide information about your nonprofit. Uh, I've seen some organizations put like writing prompt questions in there just to just help get their um, ambassadors wheels turning so when they start the fundraiser and um, get the template on their page for one there's not a lot of stuff that they have to fill out so they're um, they're pretty much ready to go um, once they start the fundraiser uh, but you know if you do put you know writing prompt type questions in there then they're able to say okay uh, why do I like volunteering for this organization? What made me get started with them? And then that kind of helps them get going um, since uh, for a lot of people who have never done um, uh, fundraising before, it can be kind of intimidating. So kind of giving them that um, first step is a really great way for you to set them up for success. So um, We've spent a little bit of time on this, but I just really want to reiterate that nonprofits that utilize peer-to-peer -peer fundraising do tend to raise more money. Um, so it's definitely worth talking about how you can incorporate it into your campaign strategy. Um, so this is available to you. Um, you know, if you don't, if you're intimidated by it this year and you're not quite sure about it, totally fine. It will be here next year. Um, so it can, if you, you know, maybe something you want to ramp up to totally fine you know do what you feel is going to work for your organization and then you know next year if you want to hop into something a little more um, in depth um, then you have you know that time to kind of get mentally prepared for it as well so your email list is going to be one of your most important tools during give local piedmont because emails are a direct line to your supporters so unlike social media, you don't have to worry about an algorithm getting in your way or preventing people from seeing what you send them, because unless they've unsubscribed from your emails, they'll end up right in the inbox and probably send them a notification on their phone. So I want to talk a little bit about email strategy, because that's going to be really important during this campaign. Um, in general, you'll want to keep your emails relatively short, simple, and skimmable. People are much more likely to read emails that pertain directly to them. So we highly recommend segmenting your email list by sorting donors into a few key groups. Um, donors who have given a lot or you know, donors who give on a regular basis, one-time donors, uh, people who have utilized your services but never donated, your board, you know, volunteers can be its own group, et cetera. Um, you don't need to create create entirely new emails for each of these groups. You know, you don't want to make like more work for yourself. Each of the emails can be the same, but if you tweak small things about the emails for each group, it does make it more personal for them. So, you know, first step, identify your key segments and then figure out how to tailor your messaging to them. So when an email is tailored to who the recipient is and the relationship that they have with your organization, they're much more likely to read it and take action on it as opposed to just ignoring it or worst case scenario, not even opening it up at all. One thing you will need to pay close attention to is the timing of your emails, um, especially if you're aiming to win um, one of the available power hours that Northern uh, Piedmont Community Foundation is putting up. So I would recommend taking the time first, you know, review the, the rules and prizes tab um, on givelocalpiedmont.org, see you know, where you can strategize around winning prizes, um, and then look through um, you know, um, uh, the schedule for the day. You know, um, take the time to schedule as much as you can beforehand. Um, and you know, having a template email ready for things that you wanna send out on the day of, 
um, like an email blast asking people to help you get to your campaign goal. So, you know, you can easily create a template for that saying, you know, we're, we're only $100 away from our, our morning goal of X amount, please help us get there. Or, you know, we only have uh, 15 minutes left in this power hour and, um, you know, we're trying to hit this goal, please, please help us um, by donating and we could win an extra, um, you know, X amount of money. Um, so having that template email ready for things that you need to send out day of um, is, is going to save you guys a lot of time um, during the day when you're trying to move quickly. Um, and then, like I mentioned before, most people read their email on their phones these days um, for the most part. You know, you know your, your donor base best. So um, if, if you know that most of them read it on desktop, um, that's great, then craft your emails to look best on desktop. I would still recommend keeping it um, short and simple because the more simple you make it, the more your call to action will stand out for them so they'll know exactly what to do. The last thing that you want is to send a nice long email that de de goes into detail about what your organization does and the last five things you accomplished, which is always great to know, but then your call to action of donate or you know give now or whatever gets lost um, because it's just this really long um, uh, just paragraph of information and most people uh, do not have a very long attention span. So you wanna make sure that it's nice and short and sweet so that they get the point um, and know exactly what you want them to do from that email that you're sending them. For those um, of your donors that do read their email on their phones, um, for one, shorter emails are much easier to read on your phone than nice long emails. Um, but you'll also want to make sure that you're formatting those emails in a mobile friendly template. Um, a lot of the email um, um, services these days like MailChimp or Constant Contact, a lot of them will um, allow you to preview your emails in uh, a mobile format so you can make sure that they look good. Um, so you'll want to make sure that you're doing that with all of the emails that you uh, are creating ahead of time too. Um, so test, test, test. Make sure that you're looking at all of your emails on desktop, on mobile, on tablet to make sure they all look good um, and that you know they're nice and short um, and your donors know exactly what they need to do uh, when they open that email from your organization, either during early giving or um, on the actual Give Local Piedmont Day. Um, and then lastly, with this, um, your call to actions within the email should be clear and action oriented. So give now, donate now, help us today. Those are very clear. People will know exactly what they mean. Um, and you want to make sure that you're, you're super clear with what you're asking them to do. Because um, if it's not clear, they're just going to delete the email or close out of it and not do what you want them to do. So more passive call to actions like you know, thanks for donating or, you know, please contribute. Those are not as effective. So you definitely want to be crystal clear and urgent. Um, and if you, you know, some organizations will, you know, write the emails and then they'll have, um, you know, people outside of their organization kind of um, review them to, to make sure that they make sense to people who, you know, because you, you're in it every day and you know what exactly you need and are asking for, but if it's confusing to anyone outside of your organization, that's not gonna help you on the day of. So if you want, you know, volunteers or someone who's not in the weeds with everything to check and, and make sure that your emails make sense and they're concise, um, then that's always a great uh, route that you can go as well. Um, and then for a high stakes campaign like Give Local Piedmont, um, we really recommend staying in your comfort zone. You know, go where your audience is when it comes to social media. So what I mean is, you know, if you have a thousand followers or 500 followers on your Facebook page, but you only have a handful on Instagram, you know, you should spend way more time and effort on promoting your campaign on Facebook than Instagram. So put your efforts into the platform where you're most likely to reach people and have an impact. Um, I definitely recommend scheduling any posts you can ahead of time, you know, just to save yourself a lot of trouble um, during the campaign and leading up to it. Get your key content scheduled with, you know, Facebook's publishing tools or Creator Studio. Uh, go into TweetDeck and schedule your tweets. You know, save any live posting for stuff that needs to be done, you know, like thanking a donor, updates on your progress, uh, prize announcements, et cetera. 
Um, then, you know, to that end, you'll you'll want to assign, if you're able to, you'll want to assign a point person. Um, this doesn't have to be their only job, but make sure that somebody knows they're in charge of monitoring social media so that you can quickly respond to comments, questions, um, interact with your followers, since you know that's really important on social media and interaction can also help you in terms of the algorithm that they use for the news feeds. Um, most platforms do show priority to post with lots of engagement. So you'll wanna keep that in mind too on the actual giving day. Um, and then sometimes it is helpful to budget a little money if you're able to boost some posts or promote some tweets. You know, on social media, $20 for an ad can actually go a long way. Um, you'll wanna make sure that your ad is targeted properly. Um, if you're not sure how to target an ad, you can always default to targeting the people who like your page or already follow you. Um, so in terms of the type of content that um, will do well on social media, it, it depends a little bit on the platform. But in general, photos and videos do really well. Um, and you may wanna consider doing something out of the box, like a Facebook Live video or watch party. Um, obviously, you know, since we're not allowed to get together at this point in time, um, doing a Facebook Live uh, is a really great way for, you know, engagement. Um, you could show people behind the scenes at your facility while you're by yourself or six feet away from whoever's with you. Um, so, you know, getting creative and doing a Facebook Live, just kind of stepping out of your comfort zone in that area um, can be a really fun way for your supporters to get involved um, with you. So um, try and think outside of the box. What tools do these social platforms that you already use, what tools do they have that can, you know, help promote your campaign and, and get creative with it? Um, so videos, photos are really great. Um, Facebook Live's awesome. Um, so, you know, those types of things, uh, the engagement you get with supporters, that'll all help your algorithm ratings to help you pop up on more people's news feeds. Um, and then of course, asking people to share um, while you're, you know, on social, uh, posting things, asking them to share will get you on um, more uh, news feeds as well, further up on people's news feeds. So there's, it's, it's tricky, but um, you know, those, those basic things, photo, video, uh, engagement, those are what is going to um, put you in front of the most amount of people. Uh, and then finally, um, when you're planning your campaign, follow up is also very important to consider. Um, so when you're planning your content, you'll also want to plan your thank you to donors. So things like making a video or a photo of your staff can be really great for this. Be sure to talk about the impact of the funds that you've raised, um, you know, to help close the loop on your campaign. So, you know, that means if you were fundraising for something specific, like a new piece of equipment or improvements to your building or something like that, you'll also want to send emails periodically on your progress. Um, so you'll want to make sure, too, that you've got an onboarding plan in place for new donors so that they come back to donate again. This is very important during this time as well, because we do not know how long um, this thing that's going on is going to be going on. So making sure you have even just a basic onboarding process in place for your new donors. Give Local Piedmont is an excellent way for you to try and get new donors. So make sure that you have something in place to help steward them so that later on in the year, um, they'll uh, be more inclined to donate to your organization again. So. If you collect addresses, you know, mailing them a welcome packet, that's a great, a great way to get them onboarded and more familiar with what your organization does. Um, if you're a little more tech savvy, you can also create an automated email journey where they can get more information about what you do and just why it's important to support your work. So as we wrap this up, um, I wanna make sure our support team's contact information is here for you to reference. They're a really, really great resource before and during the campaign for anything Give Local Piedmont related. So, you know, if you need help, um, like setting up your page, um, if you need help figuring out how to strategize around the prizes, if your donor needs a receipt resent, um, you can reach out to them at any time. Um, they are, their information's right here on the screen. Um, support at mightycause.com um, is their email address. They're available Monday through Friday, nine to five Eastern. Um, on Give Local, like on May 5th for Give Local Piedmont, they'll be available 24 hours 
um, that day. So if you need something, there will be um, at least someone on, you know, at 1 a.m. in the morning, it might just be one person, but they'll be there. Um, and then if you want additional support, um, they, you can uh, call them to uh, their phone number is listed there as well. So if you know that you're a person who uh, prefers phone support, I would write the number down. Um, that way you have it handy whenever you, um, you know, have a question and uh, want to call. And if you um, need the phone number again, uh, just write in the GoToWebinar box and we'll make sure to get it over to you in an email um, so you have it handy. Okay, um, so let me check really quick and see what uh, questions came in during the webinar. Um, so first question, what is the last day that we can update our page? So technically, you can update your page at any time. Um, there's no, like, uh, like it doesn't lock down or anything. You can make changes to your page at any time. Um, for registration purposes, um, registration ends April 17th. So you'll wanna make sure that your page is complete. Um, those to-do list tasks that I showed you at the beginning of the webinar, those are all filled out um, by April 17th. Uh, let's see. Um, yes, uh, you'll get a copy of the whole webinar, um, including a recording, and I'll be sure to um, provide a copy of the slides PDF as well. Um, that way uh, you can, you know, if you're bored uh, during this stay at home time and you just really want to listen to the webinar again, then you will definitely be able to. I don't want to stop you. <laughs> uh, Okay, this is a great question. So this person says, um, we were just notified today that um, Giving Tuesday is moving to May 5th. Um, they're, they're doing an extra initiative on May 5th as well. Um, so this person's asking, do you have any ideas on how to roll these two online fundraisers together or would you operate them separately? So um, technically I would, I would just do one. So I would roll them together. So really, utilize your Give Local Piedmont fundraising page, and you can always hashtag Giving Tuesday Now, um, which is the official hashtag for the um, the additional Giving Tuesday campaign this year. Um, so I do not recommend doing two separate fundraisers because that gets very confusing for donors. They, they don't know where to donate. They don't understand why there's two. Um, it's hard to explain. Um, so I would just um, use your Give Local Piedmont page um, that, you know, you have all, everything you need there. Um, it's very easy to donate. You've got prizes associated with this page as well. Um, so I would definitely utilize this and then, you know, just kind of um, uh, take advantage of the, um, you know, Giving Tuesday Now campaign that's going on by adding your voice to, you know, the other nonprofits who are participating. But, you know, just you can hashtag give, um, Giving Tuesday now on your social posts along with Give Local Piedmont, um, but definitely do just one. Um, and again, the Give Local Piedmont has prizes associated with it. So that's probably the, the best one for you to take advantage of. Plus it's local and donors love that. Hmm. Okay, so Ruth, I see your question about the logo. Um, so I will email you um, separately and we'll um, help you get your logo on your site. Um, let's see. Can you talk more about the campaign section? Um, how are we supposed to set that section up? So, um, I'm gonna take a stab at what, so there's two sections I think you're talking about. There's a campaign section underneath um, fundraising in your dashboard and that section you don't set up. That automatically pre-populates with any, um, you know, peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers that people set up for you. That way it basically allows you to have more visibility into, um, you know, who's fundraising for your organization on Mighty Cause. 
Um, so you don't have to do anything with the campaign section. That will automatically pre-populate with anyone who sets up um, fundraisers for you, um, either now or on, you know, give uh, give local Piedmont um, Giving Day or in the future. So that um, is just a passive section that you can um, review and uh, make sure that uh, you know you're stewarding whoever is setting up fundraising pages for you because um, it allows you to um, email them from the platform and all that good stuff as well. Um, hopefully I answered your question. If I didn't, I will, um, and I'll, I'll follow up with you um, just to make sure I answered your questions too. Uh, let's see. Some prizes do not include early giving, correct? Yes, so the power hours are do not include early giving. Those are just during specific hours of the day. Um, most of the prizes do include early giving. Um, I would definitely recommend going to the rules and prizes tab on givelocalpiedmont.org because that will um, that will specify exactly which prizes are available when um, and which donations count for which prizes. So um, go to the rules and prizes tab and all of the information about the prizes will be listed there. Um, if you do, you know, have any questions after reviewing that tab or, you know, maybe something isn't explained very well, um, then feel free um, to email DD or um, you can email support at mightycause.com and we'll make sure that it's clarified for you. Uh, do you have the Give Local Piedmont logo, et cetera, available for use um, in marketing materials slash social media? Yes, so the Give Local Piedmont logo, there's three of them available for um, nonprofits to utilize they are in the toolkit at the very bottom of the of the page so just go to givelocalpiedmont.org um, click on resources and choose the nonprofit toolkit and the logos will be um, at the bottom of that page then you can download them to your computer and then use them in whatever um, uh, marketing materials that you're creating hmm. Um, let's see. What is your opinion on referring to the current situation and its impact on your organization's work? Um, I definitely think that's relevant. And so if, you know, you are doing something specific that relates to the COVID-19 response, for sure include it. Let people know what you're doing as an organization because this is, this is what's on everyone's minds right now. Um, and they're going to want to know what is your organization doing now if your organization like isn't really doing anything that's totally fine um, and you you really wanted to utilize give local Piedmont for a new building um, if you're able to still tie it into uh, you know the COVID-19 response that's great if you're not that's totally okay too I know that there there are some organizations who you know they're not obviously related like you know um, some arts organizations might be questioning how they can um, utilize this time to really raise funds for their um, organizations but really like for them specifically um, get creative about it so people are really anxious during this time and a lot of um, a lot of individuals like to use the arts as a way to kind of um, calm themselves. So having the funding still go to organizations who aren't, you know, food related or, um, you know, medical or health related, um, you can still find a way a lot of times to connect it. Um, but because this is the, the season that we're in, I would, if you're able to relate it, then definitely um, definitely take advantage of that so people understand what your organization is doing um, to, uh, as a response in your community. <clears throat> um, let's see, where can I find information on how to schedule donations early, specifically how to steps for donors? So once early giving starts on April 21st, the main call to action button on givelocalpiedmont.org will say donate. Um, right now, the call to action is register, so um, it, that button says register. But if people wanted to make an early gift, um, then they're, they're able to do that by going to, um, they can go to givelocalpiedmont.org and click donate, or um, probably a better idea, send them to your organization's profile page and then have them click donate on your profile page 
that way um, it's less steps for them because if they click donate on the givelocalpiedmont.org site that's fine they'll just have to search for your organization among the participating organizations so the less work that you make for them then the more likely they are to donate and not get lost in the process um, so again uh, once early giving starts send them a link to your organization's uh, page on Give Local Piedmont and then just tell them to click the big donate button. Uh, so hopefully that won't be confusing for them. Um, but if it is, let us know and we will be happy to send you, you know, screenshots or something um, if that's helpful for your donors. Uh, let's see. Um, can you please repeat the early start date? So early giving starts on April 21st. Registration ends April 17th. Give Local Piedmont is May 5th. Um, and the dates are all on givelocalpiedmont.org as well. Um, so you, you can find them there too, but early giving starts April 21st. Uh, and just um, to clarify too, uh, any donations that are made starting April 21st for early giving, um, they automatically are transacted. There's no like pledging, there's no like pre-scheduling. So someone can't go in and say, I want my transaction to go through like three days from now. Um, that is not available. So they, once they go on to make a donation, it'll automatically get processed. Um, Part of that is because we've had problems in the past with cards not working and then it being harder to get a hold of people to make donations and make sure they go through. So, and also because of the immediacy of the donation and the tax deductibility, uh, they get an automatic receipt too. And so um, there's some legal and technical uh, reasons why the pre-scheduling isn't available um, this year, but uh, their donation is immediately uh, deducted and um, they get an automatic receipt once it goes through. So just making sure that that's, uh, everyone's aware of that. Um, let's see, at least 50% of our clients do not have internet, any suggestions? Um, they can definitely make um, offline donations if they want, or in the form of cash or checks, and you are more than welcome to record them on your organization's um, uh, profile page so that you can still keep track of your total race throughout the day. Um, to get them to count towards prizes, um, you know, I would maybe, if you wanted to during the day, to set up a kind of open forum. Um, and it's it's really difficult because they can't like come to your business nowadays. But um, I would probably uh, have some sort of um, sheet that you have instructions for donating on, um, on how to, well, they don't have internet. Um, Didi, how have you, how there have are you in the, um, yeah, we're trying to, and I hope it happens in Madison County. Madison is probably the most, um, threatened in terms of lack of internet access, but all four counties, I mean, my house is a good example. I live in Falk here. I have two terrible internet here. Um, what I do know is that, for instance, in Fauquier County, hotspots have been set up. So you can drive your car to a business, sit in your car in the parking lot, and have access to internet. It's very possible that what we can do is collect, in all four of our counties, collect those locations where it's safe for people to go where they're not interacting and where they can access internet uh, on a mobile phone or uh, taking a laptop with them. I know that sounds a little ditzy, but it at least gets us a little bit closer to uh, some of the horrifying numbers that you hear in our counties about who doesn't have in <laughs> who doesn't have internet. Um, so we'll send that information out. Uh, yeah, we'll send that information out. I think I posted something on Facebook just the other day on our page about the five hotspots in Fauquier County, and I'm We'll try and find out what the other three counties are doing. Okay. Yeah, it definitely is a little more difficult since libraries aren't open anymore. Um, so I think that'll be a great way. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So it, it yeah, it does make it more tricky. Yep. Um, 
Okay, it looks yeah, like libraries and Starbucks. <laughs> I, <laughs> I know. Um, that was all of the questions. Um, so Dee Dee, do you have any? Um, it looks like we are right at time. So do you have any? Um, you know, final thoughts for us? Nope, I'm all good. I, I really appreciate everybody joining us today and just keep in touch. Don't suffer silently. <laughs> and don't, you know, I wouldn't spend a very long time trying to figure something out. There's so much support for you out here. Yeah. Um, please reach out, it, you know, reach out directly to Mighty Cause with support at Mighty Cause or reach out to us. Um, and we've got folks ready to share screens with you and help you out so you know do not suffer silently yeah i i usually say if you spend more than 30 seconds trying to figure something out let somebody else know because we can help you solve it much quicker so um dd had mentioned it but support yeah. at mightycause.com we can definitely help you you still have plenty of time if you're on step two of registration and you're working to fill out your to-do list and get your page set up there's still plenty of time, so you know, make sure that you work on it now, and that way you are ahead of schedule and aren't aren't rushing at the end um, before it closes. So, um, okay, well, uh, thank you so much, everyone, again for joining today's webinar. Um, we are really excited for Give Local Piedmont, um, and I and I know Dee Dee just want to wish everyone the best of luck. Thank you to all. Thank you, Dawn. Yep. Have a great day, everyone.